Hello people of the internet, I'm Yellowday420, and my favorite BFDI character is Fury Jr. Well, actually, I have other favorites too, but I chose Fury Jr. to be the character people know me for. Like, for example, this picture reminds you of Well, this picture will soon make you think of me. Anyways, in this video, I will tell you the entire history of Fury Jr., why he is secretly peak, and hopefully make him more likable. Anyways, enough waffling and yapping, let's begin. In BFDI 14, Fury Jr. makes his first ever appearance, but he just kills himself. What? In BFDI 25, Fury Jr. appears again and doesn't kill himself this time. He is in the crowd, and that was all of BFDI. He didn't really do anything except kill himself that one time. Anyways, in FDIA, he did even less, he died again. Okay, Jack Jellify, what do you have with killing this poor child? And I should probably add IDFB also to this section, uh, he just exists, yeah. Finally, BFB, the season where Fairy Jr. doesn't appear on screen for like 2 seconds the entire season. In BFB 1, he joins Team Ice Cube, which is a really good choice because a lot of characters I like used to be on Team Ice Cube, so it's nice to see that. Also, BFB1 sets up Fury Jr. being caring as well because he starts yapping to Gelatin and Donut for wanting to blow up Bami, a very good episode for Fury Jr. In BFB2, Fury Jr. tells Bracelet she will get over being sad because their team didn't luck out like Ice Cube, again? Caring Fury Jr. in two episodes in a row? This is like a dream come true. In BFB3, Fury Jr. just does this. Jr., there's no one quite like you! <laughs> we I have nothing against it. But it seems like Fury Jr. is getting less and less screen time every episode, shit. In BFB4, Fury Jr. gets surprised that Bracelet isn't called Ringy, despite calling her Bracelet three episodes ago. Quick, grab Bracelet while she's still incapacitated. I get it, writing mistakes. In BFB5, there's an off screen flashback showing him being held by the leg by Gelatin in an attempt to blow up Bami. Before I continue, why the heck is Fury Jr. always being harassed or abused? I'm going to Jack Jellify's headquarters and throwing my own bomby there. Uh, back to the video. Fury Jr. later looks at Gelatin with an angry look when Gelatin wants to blow up bomby again. I love that Fury Jr. has the biggest beef ever with people but also at the same time has a caring side. Anyways, in BFB6, he just exists again. In BFB7, Fury Jr. claims that Naley is ungrateful that Loser saved her during the challenge when Bubble threw the liar ball at Spongy. Which Fury Jr. launches it elsewhere and says they didn't ask for this. Ooh. Hey, what makes you think we want it? Alright, another great episode for the kid. In BFB8, he exists again. Is this a trend? That every episode after Fury Jr. was peaked they make him simply exist the next episode? Humph. In BFB9, he suggests that 4 must come back, which I do not agree with as I despise 4 with all my heart and anger. So that means we need to get 4 back. Oh! I know how we can get four back. I promise it worked last time. Marker, you know, I'm not too sure about this, but I think maybe there's just a chance that you're an idiot. Geometry Dash! BFB 10, he exists. Darn ID Jack Jellify, I know what you're up to. This has happened like three times in a row already. BFB 11 is Peak Fury Jr. writing. Fury Jr. chides Naley for stabbing Spongy. He later suspects Gelatin to be the imposter, as he hadn't attempted to use Bami to win yet. Barfbag rebuts him, though he remains dubious. When Barfbag suspects Naley for not saying she nailed, Naley argues that she didn't because Fury Jr. said it was annoying, which he stands by. Donut states that Fury Jr. can't be the imposter, as there's no one quite like him. Fury Jr. turns on him, asking if he was supposed to be mean. This confuses Barfbag, and he explains to her that Donut had to be mean in order to be eliminated first in the field. Barfbag defends Donut, leading Fiery Jr. to grow suspicious of her. He agrees with Barfbag that all Spongy does is sit around. Fiery Jr. begins to suspect Bobby but is cut off by Donut. Ines wins off screen, causing Team Ice Cube to lose. Fiery Jr. and Bailey argue, blaming one another for their loss. He also scolds Spongy after the latter plane he liked the sailor plans. Finally, Fiery Jr. has so much to do in an episode, I really hope he won't be eliminated anytime soon. In BFB 16, Fiery Jr. wants to escape 4. But Stapy tells him that Spongy is flammable. This angers Fiery Jr., but later Stapy allows him to escape. But before he could escape he accidentally burns Spongy. Fiery Jr. quickly jumps out and apologizes. And that was all for BFB Fiery Jr. 
Honestly, I have two nitpicks, why the heck did he have peak writing in an episode and then the next episode he just exists, and also why the heck did he get eliminated, he had so much in the previous episode, oh well, time to move on. Ha, you really thought I was done with BFB? No, in BFB 30, Fiery Jr. is cheering for 4, but he overhears Flower wondering when 4 is coming back, which makes me remember that this isn't even Fiery Jr., alright, Benjamin, the fake Fiery Jr., you got me but I'm not gonna continue with your games, it's deep hot time. In Teapot 1, Fiery Jr. once again gets hurt like he usually does, anyways, he didn't have much going for in Teapot 1's exit scenes, next time he appears, two whole years later, he does nothing, he just rolls 8 ball around, and that's all, really. Two whole years wasted from my life hoping to see Fiery Jr. do something. Sigh. Oh never mind, we didn't have to wait two whole years for the next part. Anyways, in this third and final part currently, Fiery Jr. is finally speaking after almost four years. Anyways, he wants to go deeper into the forest. He gets what he wished for and will venture deep into the forest with 8-Ball and Dora. Really good choices, honestly. I like Dora, but uh, 8-Ball not so much. But it's still fun seeing Fiery Jr. use 8-Ball as a vehicle. Anyways, that was the entire history of Fiery Jr. It might sound like he got a lot of screen time, but if I'm not wrong, everything is just explained happened with less than 10 minutes if you combine them all together. That's right. Fiery Jr. has had screen time less than 10 minutes. Now I get it. They can't make every character be on screen for hours, but, goddamn if you wouldn't have made him just stand in like half of the episodes that he was in during BFB. Anyways, let's get into why people dislike Fiery Jr. Reason 1, Fiery Clone. This is stupid. Is Fiery aggressive? Well, sometimes, yeah, but Fiery Jr. is still unique to Fiery. Fiery Jr.'s personality is aggressive outside but caring inside, Fiery isn't, I think Fiery is the opposite of that. Did I mention people hate him for being aggressive? I'm not surprised if 90% of Fiery Jr. haters are tree fans because tree fans already have like half a brain cell left in their brain. Anyways, I don't find other reasons why people hate him, those are the two reasons, and both of them are the most stupid reasons ever. Oh yeah, have I mentioned yet that Fiery Jr. is hated by his own freaking recommender? Alright. Time to predict the future for Fiery Jr. Since Teapot seems to show the Exiters in every two episodes, the Exiters will show up in Teapot 11 again. I think we will still be seeing Pencil Squad, but we'll also see how the other squads are doing. I think Fiery Jr.'s squad won't be up to anything special, and they'll just hear some strange noises maybe. Anyways, for Teapot 13, I feel like the scenes will focus on Lies group because they have a more interesting place to go to, but I feel that Fiery Jr.'s group will still appear. My theory is that Fiery Jr.'s group will hear strange noises the deeper they get into the forest, and my theory is they'll find one of the Algebrarians trapped deep inside the forest. My guess is one of these guys. Anyways, why do I think 4 has an Algebrarian inside of him? Well, my theory is that 4 trapped the Algebrarians in different places around the door due to some argument or even battle. One is inside the moon. I predict 3 is in the volcano, and I also predict somebody is inside the sun, and it would make sense 4 trapped somebody in himself as well. I think the Algebrarian will teleport them back to the other groups, and the Algebrarian helps them escape 4 until there's some fight scene with 4 and the Algebrarian. 4 loses. Now I think Lai found the places of where each Algebrarian is trapped in the temple looking buildings and her group's location. Anyways, that was my prediction for the future. I think something like this will happen eventually. Anyways, Fiery Jr. will definitely have a debut with the other Exeters for Teapot. And I am definitely voting for Fiery Jr. because everybody else is already getting too many votes to rejoin. Fiery Jr. Nation gotta stand up. I still fear Fiery Jr. won't join Teapot. There are just better competitors, like Pencil and Lai, but oh well, it's fun to think about Fiery Jr. joining Teapot. I personally think he would join the strongest team on earth. I think he would bond with Grassy well. But that was just my thoughts. Anyways, thank you for watching this video, this is my biggest analysis video yet, and I think it will be for a long time. Anyways, Fiery Jr. is peak, and you should definitely put him at least a tier or two up on your own tier list. Anyways, thanks for watching again. Subscribing would help a lot because I'm doing more of these object show analysis videos, also today is my birthday so if you wouldn't mind please comment a happy birthday to me as well. Commenting helps to boost the video a lot, and so does liking, alright bye.